Hi everybody, I'm Gabe Smoley. I'm one of the brewers here at Summit Brewing Company. I'm the brewer behind our most recent Unchained beer, uh, Unchained number 12, which is a 100% organic ale. So a little bit about um, what went into this beer. It's been a very long and difficult process getting from point A to point B. I can definitely say this has probably been the most challenging project in my professional brewing career. Uh, but as the great John Lennon said, it's a hard row to hoe but I think we've ended up with uh, quite a nice field here at the end. I actually started um, researching this about eight months ago, and the first step was trying to determine if I could get enough raw ingredients to actually produce the beer. Once I realized that I could find enough to make the four batches uh, for this Unchained beer, the next step was to uh, go through the certification process, which uh, was a very long, difficult process, um, but um, it, it enabled us to basically make this 100% certified beer. For the grains in this beer, I got uh, pretty much everything as locally as I could. Um, most of the grains in this beer came from Breeze Malting in Wisconsin, so um, you know, as part of the whole message of being an organic ale, I wanted to get as many of the raw ingredients as close uh, to the brewery as possible. For the hops, that was a little bit more challenging. Um, there aren't a whole lot of organic, uh, certified organic hops in the United States, and so um, I, was, I was able, however, to uh, get enough to make this batch of beer from one specific farm in Moxie, Washington. Organic hops have actually gone through a lot of changes. As of January 1st of this year, in order to make organic beer, you had to use organic hops. That kind of seems silly, but um, prior to that, hops were actually on an exempt list so you could make an organic beer without organic hops and that's one of the major changes that's uh, happening uh, in the organic sector of the brewing industry so for the past three years this law saying that um, you didn't have to use organic hops has been sunsetting and that's basically allowed the industry to prepare for this change uh, it's allowed farmers to uh, plant more uh, hops and, and allowed us to have more of those raw ingredients to make beer so for the yeast um, we had to go through quite an interesting process to make a 100% certified organic yeast strain because um, yeast isn't really considered an, uh, an agricultural product, but yet it's a main ingredient in beer. So we had to work closely with MCIA to make this organic yeast strain and, and discuss how we were going to go about that process. Essentially what we did is we took a non-organic yeast strain from a major laboratory and then grew that on uh, an organic yeast source. Um, and then harvested that yeast and grew it up full scale here at the brewery. So we had to use our propagation system and continue to, continue to feed the yeast with um, more of this uh, organic sugar source until we had a large enough quantity of it that we could actually uh, pitch it into our fermenter and make a full batch of the 100% organic ale. 100% organic ale is obviously very interesting because it's a certified organic beer, but you know, what people really are probably concerned about is what does the beer taste like? I mean, that's probably the most important. So for this beer, I was trying to uh, gear the recipe more towards springtime, so I wanted something a little bit lower in alcohol. For some reason, I always tell people I'm, I'm not much of a hop head, but that seems to be the only beer I ever drink, so maybe I'm just kidding myself. I wanted to make a beer that um, had quite a lot of hop character, but was a little bit lower in alcohol. So it was kind of a delicate balance between the two. People have asked, you know, what style this beer is, and I've called it a session IPA just because it doesn't really fit in any other category. You know, it's it's way too hoppy to be a pale ale and it's probably way too low in alcohol to be an IPA, so it's kind of a, a good way to describe the beer, but not necessarily a beer style. You know, the malts I used in this, I wanted to make sure there was enough of a malt backbone to hold up to the, the really assertive hops that are in here. So I used some pale malt and I used a little bit of Crystal 120 and that gave it a little bit more uh, body and I also use Munich that's got a nice a nice malt character to it as well and then I also use, I also use a little carafa too and that helped give it this nice uh, light copper color so it's got an illusion of being maybe a little bit more malty than it actually is but when you taste it uh, you'll, you'll get more of the the hop character to it and you'll definitely get a lot of that you know very firm assertive hop bitterness, but over time as your palate gets saturated, you really start to enjoy some of the floral characteristics of this beer. I used um, three different hops that uh, really give that floral characteristic. I used uh, Palisade as a bittering hop, and then most of the hops towards the end were Cascade and Centennial, 
and they definitely give this very perfumey, kind of rosy characteristic. And um, that's kind of nice because there's a lot of hoppy beers out there that are citrusy or piney or grapefruity or tropical. And I wanted to, you know, try and explore a different hop flavor and aroma. And by using that combination of the Palisade, Cascade, and Centennial hops, I think I was really able to get that earthy floral characteristic. <laughs> My favorite hop is Centennial, and not only did we use that towards the end of the boil, we also used it in the Whirlpool. I also added uh, 132 pounds to each fermenter through the dry hopping process here, and that's the same amount we use uh, with the Saga IPA. So this is a very aggressively hopped, lighter session IPA. By putting all those Centennials uh, in the fermenter post-fermentation, you really get all those nice floral, floral characteristics, but it doesn't come off as being um, uh, too bitter. Anybody who works in, our, in an artistic or a very creative field will probably tell you that if, if you really want to accomplish something, you've got to challenge yourself. And I knew right away when I decided to do this project, um, it was either going to be all or nothing. When I started researching doing a certified organic beer, I, I told myself it has to be 100%. I just, that's just the way I'm wired, and I didn't really think there was any other way to make this beer. It had to be 100%. And you, you kind of put yourself out there when, when you take challenges like that, but you know, that's the type of company we are. We've, you know, this company's full of great innovators and you know, we don't step, we don't back down to challenges. That's kind of just the DNA of Summit. So, you know, sometimes when you shoot for the dark side of the moon, you, you might miss, but I think we had a, a soft landing with this beer. It's awesome to be able to present and offer this beer to you guys. If you want to come Try a few beers, go to summitbrewing.com, click on the happenings link, and it'll have a list of all the events we're doing. It'll also be here at the tap room, and I hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Hey, Chip, come here. Do you hear what we're gonna do for Unchained number 13? We're actually gonna make a beer in reverse. <laughs>